Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. This is pretty much where we left off last episode in our finished little, or mostly finished little, alchemist workshop and we're going to continue on with a little bit of work towards this goal in this episode by building ourselves a double blaze spawner to feed our supply of blaze powder for this as well as the uh, blaze powder for crafting some of the recipes and we're going to finish getting this whole thing set up after we do that as well. Make sure that the potion brewing is all easy and uh, approachable. And that way we have ourselves set up for getting plenty of blaze rods for whatever purpose we need them for. And as many potions as we will ever need. So with that, let's go uh, clear out this inventory a little bit. Because it's still full of all the resources that I used for creating this. And I really just need to get it nice and clean for this episode. And then we'll head on over after gathering some materials to the nether to uh, see what we can come up with. So let me do all that chores stuff. <laughs> and then we'll get into the main meat of the episode. See what design we can come up with for our blaze spawners. Okay. So, with a fresh inventory and a little bit of glass prepared for our coming build, I don't have all the resources that I want for the build yet because I don't know exactly how I'm going to decorate it. But one of the things that I do know what I'm going to do is the mechanics behind it. So I just wanted to show something off really quickly that has to do with how lava works in the overworld compared to in the nether. So if I put that down there, in the overworld lava will only flow four blocks and then it will stop. I'm glad I got that right because I was saying it so confidently. So as you can see that's four pieces of glass wide and that's as far as it goes. At the same time it also flows a little bit slower I believe but don't quote me on that one. <laughs> but if we pop over to the nether you'll be able to see that it does in fact flow eight blocks. So it flows the same distance as water does in the overworld. So with that, in the nether, during the nether update for 1.16, which introduced all these new biomes, they made it so that lava pushes mobs much the same way that water does. And we're going to use that mechanic over with the blazers over there. So my idea is, I'm just going to pick this up because I don't want that sitting there for no reason. My idea is since they're both set up so perfectly, I essentially just want to build two large glass chambers that flow down to the central point of the crossroads over there that has the the two in between it so i'll just fly over there because it's better to show it off Ooh, may as well kill these guys while i'm here because it's always worth trying to get some extra with the skeleton skulls let's test our luck oh of course i got a hit no and uh, no <laughs> that's okay Right, so as I was saying, basically what I want to do is open this up a little bit and create a chamber around that one and a chamber around this one. And the lava can flow in a staggered layer like a, a waterfall, a very smooth transition down until it essentially reaches this point here. And then we can have a couple more flowing it into a corner piece. And then when we're standing on that block that is perfectly in between those two, we're going to have both of them active at the same time. We should be protected if we build up a nice little room around this. And they're going to slowly make their way down and down on both sides until they're funneled into a position where we can just sit there swinging our sword. And that's going to get us more than enough blaze rods for our needs. If we're using a looting three sword, it's just going to be ridiculous how much we get. We can set up a little hopper system and everything should be fairly simple. Now, thankfully, because of my gold farm over there, I already have a heap of fire resistance potions, so it should be fairly easy to build and not have to worry about getting shot by them. As you can see just here, I still have a decent amount of ones that I've extended myself with some redstone. So I've got plenty of potions to uh, consume while I'm building over there. And hopefully it all turns out all right. So what I think I might do is pop into a time lapse, build up the, uh, the containment area itself and see whether I can get the uh, lava all enclosed and flowing. Would prefer not to die while I'm explaining what's going on. But as I was saying, I should be able to get the uh, containment area up and running fairly easily. Get the lava flow and get them moving down. And then once we have all of that contained, that means that they're no longer going to be able to shoot us while they spawn. They shouldn't be able to see us either if they're fully contained inside of a glass case. And then we can work on decorating it a little bit. I'm slightly rushing through this one because I do want to also get over and do some stuff in the potion area or the uh, alchemist workshop from last episode and uh, see whether we can get some potions going by the end of this episode. So hopefully you guys enjoy the time lapse. I might do a little bit of decorating around it 
and then bring you back in to uh, see whether it's starting to get the blazes flowing down. And from there, we can fine tune a few things as far as the mechanism goes. And then we head on back to the Alchemist Workshop. So with that, enjoy the time lapse and I'll see you on the other side. And welcome back. So I've done a little bit more just at the end of that time lapse and uh, left it there without doing too much more decorating because first things first, I should probably test that it actually works. And that involves going in there and removing all these blocks that were stopping the spawns. As you can see, I've got myself a little killing chamber down here where hopefully <laughs> when we test this out, the blazers should get dropped down into that area there and I should be able to reach them. As you can see, there's a few particles coming off that block, which means that this swing is hitting at least that far away, and all of their drops should go into this. And then up here, I have a very simple little design going up to the spot here, where, as you can see by the particles coming out of the bottom of there, I am activating both of those spawners. <sighs> so, <laughs> now it's time to uh, cross your fingers, chug ourselves a fire resistance potion, and hope for the best. So I'm going to take this potion, break the glass, and uh, see if I can head in, clear that one out, and then clear the other one out. And we might have to then fly away so that we despawn any that are in there, because they will have seen us. The whole purpose of this is so that they don't actually get line of sight. I believe the glass blocks that. And if they don't get line of sight, they aren't going to fly up into the air. And as you can see here, they should flow down this lava fall, which is stopped at the edge with these signs. And then I have a smaller lava flow down the bottom that sends it into the middle. And all of that flows down, hopefully, just into this area. Okay, I'm a little worried. I've got 90 levels and there is the possibility that I could get into some trouble here. But we'll drink this potion so that we can sleep. Sleep? <laughs> Swim. Because <laughs> they're so similar. Swim in the lava without dying. I think a... Yeah, he just spawned over there. We are going to have to do some work to probably spawn-proof this area, putting down some buttons. If you can make buttons out of the uh, nether rack or the nether brick, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, I am silly. I should definitely break the glass further up through the top here. We'll go down two. I was smart enough with this side to uh, make it... Ooh, <laughs> make it out of the nether rack in the middle so that it's a lot easier to break. But I will have to be careful that I don't accidentally break the spawner itself. That would be absolutely tragic. <laughs> and hopefully, once these are opened up, all the work that I've put into this will be worthwhile. Thankfully, we haven't had too many spawns, just that one for starters. But as I open this up, it's definitely going to become a bit more of a, a danger zone. Thankfully, with the fire resistance, we're not really in that much danger as long as we stay away from them. I don't want to be too close to them, otherwise they can melee attack you, but their fire is completely useless. Being very careful here to not hit the spawner, just in case sometimes if you're mining a very easily mineable uh, block like the netherrack, it will speed up your mining speed and you can phantom mine a, another block at a far higher speed than you might usually be able to. It's just a thing that I've noticed sometimes, don't know how accurate that is, but I wanted to be careful not to break it. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, let's do the same on the other side. It's good to see him in there. He should be flowing. He is just very, very slowly. We'll just <laughs> keep going. And if we have to make adjustments later, that's just what we'll have to do. Oh, <laughs> that actually scared me quite a lot. Oh, please don't do anything silly here. 
something is happening. Hmm. Uh, last thing I want is to get trapped there and have my fire potion run out. <laughs> so I'll get out of there first. We'll rebuild up here. Oh god, where did that come from? Down there probably. And I'll just, if I can place it there. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Whew, little bit stressful. Now, I'll likely enclose this whole area so that we... Oh, wow, they actually hit pretty hard in melee. Like I was saying, I'll probably enclose this area so that we don't have problems with ghasts or anything. You can see that one flying over there. I would like to make sure that they cannot possibly hit us. And hopefully spawn-proofing the inside of the dome will allow us to sit in here pretty comfortably, collect the resources that we want, being the blaze rods, and it should be a nice little area. I went with that sort of uh, dome dish style that I did with the, the main part of the nether hub to try and have some continuity between our designs in the nether. And I would like to connect the bridges that we have uh, over at our nether hub and, and connect it up to this area here so that we can sort of run across there or just follow the, uh, the eye line of the bridge to get over here nice and quickly and maybe add a couple of other little things over here as well if we wanted to in the future. Oof, those melee attacks. Considering that I am wearing netherite with protection, it's impressive how much damage they do. I wonder whether it counts as fire damage when they do a melee attack because of the, uh, well, because of the way that they are. Looks like that guy down there is getting stuck on one of the edges of a, uh, of a sign, so there may be some... Ooh. <laughs> Whew, really have to be careful there. There may be some adjustments required just to make sure that they do fall down, but it could also be because I came over this direction and he saw me, and so he may be flying upwards. We'll, we'll wait and see. All right, we're finally back into our corner here. Thankfully, our fire resistance stayed up the whole time. I should be able to remove those three, and there we go. Now, it's interesting. It seems that as soon as they do lo lose line of sight, they drop, which is great for us. <laughs> Means that I don't have to fly away right now. I'm going to go down and stand on my little area and we'll observe what happens. So it does look like they're flowing downwards. Cool. We've got a couple of spawns there, which is perfect. It will be interesting, hopefully, with a little bit of uh, time as they start to flow down, if any gets stuck... They're going to uh, bump each other off anyway, and that'll solve our problem without having to do anything. We just have to stand here for a decent little bit of time, but good amount of spawns, not too bad. I think I'll probably sit here for about five minutes, uh, let them build up, and hopefully drop down. Uh, it's hard to see whether they are fully down from here, but once I've been standing here for a little while, I'll go down and see how many blazes we have and how many rods we can collect. So I'll be back with you in just a second. And honestly, I don't think I need to wait the five minutes. I've already noticed a problem where I have to probably put some glass over top of the spawner up there. It might lessen the rates a little bit, but it'll stop us from getting them stuck. I think there's actually two in that one spot. I'm not quite sure, but it's literally been under two minutes. I can see a lot of particle effects. So hopefully, as I come down here, this won't aggro them because they shouldn't be able to see me. And I'll see if I can kill all the ones that are in there as they pop down. Making room for new ones as I get rid of the old ones that are probably filling up the space. And we'll check our chests and see how many blaze rods we get from just a couple of minutes. Cool. It looks like we got rid of the most of them and now new ones are pouring in. They were just falling as we were going. 25 on that side. 20 k Close to a stack maybe every couple of minutes. That's not bad. Just going by how much I personally want. I'm really happy with that. All I would have to do is if I wanted some, is come up here, wait for a few minutes, and I could essentially get myself a stack's worth or so. I might quickly go up there, add the glass on top, and wait for another couple of minutes and see whether even more get down into the middle. And then I think we could call this a success. <laughs> Looking at them uh, dropping in, it looks like the lava flow that I have does work correctly. They might not, <laughs> as you can see in the very bottom corner there of my screen, they don't quite flow down until they have others pushing them out of the way. So as soon as I fix that problem with them sitting up on top there, which probably does lessen the spawns, I think we should have a perfectly functional and efficient farm. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'll do a little bit more testing, patch those problems up, wait a few minutes and see how many rods we get, and then we can head back over to the potion area and put them to use. Again, I'll see you in just a second. 
All right. This time, I actually did go for exactly five minutes. My timer just went off. And as you can see, they're starting to back up in the system. So obviously, it's pretty full down there. There's a lot of particles going on. Thankfully, it's not lagging me out too much. We're just going to start chopping away and see how many we get. I don't think while I'm down here that I'm close enough to the spawners uh, for them to continue spawning. So once we run out, that should be about how much we would get in five minutes. Okay, I think that might be it. And that's 67. And, ooh, 100. So, maybe about 100. Ooh, let me think. <laughs> I think we got about oh, 55 or so in the first lot of two minutes. So if we say, get rid of 55 as a decent... Uh, guesstimate at what we had before and then put all the rest of it in here that is 112 per minute so uh per <laughs> per five minutes 112 per minute would be pretty good so per five minutes i get close-ish to two stacks worth not bad cool well actually <laughs> what am i putting that away for that's probably enough for me to get going for now i can come back here and and stand on that spot a little bit longer at another time we'll do a little bit of decorating and probably put a cover over the top of this whole thing Make it look a little bit nicer and a little bit less dull. It's really dark right now. So I will add some uh, some spawn proofing. Maybe even bring some colored carpet in here. And put it on top of the blocks so that we can get some color as well as spawn proof all of these blocks. And we'll eventually connect it up maybe somewhere around here to this walkway. And I'm honestly thinking that I might try and remove this, uh, this nether fortress. But that is an almighty job. There is... More blocks here than you could <laughs> really comprehend, I think. It's actually quite ridiculous. But I would like to have this direct line here pop through somewhere like over on this side. And then if we continue along that line, do a little bit of a jump. Cool. We'll open that up. And that. And as you can see, over there is the end of our bridge. We could remove that section there and create a nice big crossroads here. Connect that up to our bridge system and a little bit of uh, decoration here. Maybe a little build on this flat plateau. And then we're actually getting really close to the release of the uh, new update. Now, I'm not necessarily going to pop into the new update straight away, but I will be wanting to get my hand on some of those blocks. So what I think I will do is at some point soon, I might give it a little bit of time for the replay mod to update so that I can still do time lapses and whatnot. And then we can extend this bridge over here, connect it up to that area. And in this direction, we might make a highway out a good couple of hundred blocks, hopefully far enough that we haven't loaded the chunks that are out that far in the overworld. And then when we spawn in there, we should be able to get the new generation, uh, a whole new set of chunks, and that way we can get hold of some of the newer blocks. I'll just have to wait and see how that's going to work. I haven't heard uh, or really looked into too much how the transition between the two updates, being the 1.16 and the 1.17, will go. So I do want to make sure that it's nice and stable before I continue to uh, work on this world. But I'd like to know whether you guys would be interested in me just doing a once-off episode, jumping in and having a look at the, uh, the new stuff. Either way, I think we've got a decent setup over there, a good plan for what to do in a little bit of time over this area. And with that, it's time to head over and see if we can get some potions working. <laughs> so let's head to the Alchemist Workshop. And I think we'll enter through <laughs> the pond up here. Now, Alexander in the comments actually suggested that we try and do a block switcher here that changes that from a magma block to a soul sand block and allows me to change the direction of the flow of this bubble vader. So I might spend a little time off camera seeing whether I can get that to work because that would be a great way to just change that up and give us options for how we want to exit. But, oh wow, I forgot. I actually really like the look of this area. Someone else in the comments, sorry I forgot to check before I started filming, I can't quite remember your name, but you also said that on this uh, podzel, these mushrooms will grow at any light level, so I might also change over some of the bottom there to podzel. And one of the things that I did research is that they won't grow once they have five within a certain radius. So my best bet is to actually leave one and try and let that spread rather than having a bunch of them because there was only the chance for one to grow now it's got a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more breathing space we'll call it <laughs> so i'll just go over here place those mushrooms in and i grabbed the remainder of the blaze rods that i had over in my storage room to get started on this area here so 
I should go get myself a couple of these item frames so that I can put them on top of these. That way we know at a glance what's going on inside of it. So I might quickly do that. I only need five. I am getting really good at flying through there. Oh, Enderman. Ah. <laughs> we'll grab ourselves a few pieces of leather and I should have some sticks. Yep, wonderful. Don't quite know whether that's enough. It is. Cool. Head back down over here. And now <laughs> the storage is properly set up. Wonderful. So I don't think I need any of these to remain blaze rods. I've made the uh, <laughs> brewing stands that I need because I'm only using three. So I think it's two per. It is. This will get us a really decent little supply of blaze powder. I'm going to put a handful of them in here and then I might just put one stack over in this one here for when we're making the strength potions. Now, since I have so much, I'm going to put a full stack in each one of these. And honestly, it was kind of overkill to build that blaze spawner, especially for this in particular. I'm never going to need that many blaze rods or that much blaze powder for making these potions. So I think it will end up being put into a super smelter or over somewhere where I can utilize the, the rods themselves a little bit better than just here. But it's a fun little project and it's something that I have in my world for future and it's also something that I don't think I've ever built before. So part of this series is always trying new things and I'm glad that I did. Now, what will we try and make? For starters, I think what I want to do is maybe try and get myself a fortune pick because I believe if you fortune the nether wart, you will get more with a fortune three than you would by just farming it manually. So I think this one here is fully grown. We'll test that out. We got three, okay, and we'll go, do I have <laughs> an ender chest? I don't. We'll go grab our existing fortune pickaxe out of the ender chest, and <laughs> that wasn't as good as entrance as last time. And we'll test the theory. Uh, where is it? There it is. May as well grab myself a spare ender chest just to take over to the alchemist shop. And then remembering that I got three, even though that's not necessarily the maximum that you can get. Let's see whether we get... Five. Cool. That's good to know. What about that? That's four. Another four. And we don't have any more grown to test it on. So I think it does provide a little bit more. It'd be good to have ourselves maybe an, another item frame, even though I thought that I had all the ones that I needed sitting on the edge there uh, with something that has Fortune 3 on it. I'll do that at some point. For now, we have enough to place into each one of these. And I know that I could have done this in an automatic way. I don't mind doing stuff manually, especially when it's so low effort. It's really not that big of a deal to uh, just spend a little bit of time manually putting the stuff in. I will grab a crafting bench, probably put it just down in here, <laughs> into the water itself. That way I can craft up a couple of these glass bottles and fill them up. Cool. <laughs> a little bit much, but we're going to put it in here anyway. Very good. That'll be making itself into awkward potions. We'll go over here and place the uh, unused ones. Put that nether water away as well. And cool. Awkward potions achieved. Now we should be... Oh, <laughs> I've got some in my inventory, so that's all right. We should be able to just turn these into some night vision potions like so. And then I want to extend those as well. we'll grab three pieces of redstone for once that's done. And it's working. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I really needed to test this. It's a pretty flawless design. It's not like it's overly complicated, but it is nice to make sure that we have all the stuff required in this room itself. So that's where coming up with the, uh, the necessity of getting ourselves a fortune item to uh, keep nearby, making sure that we have the item frames here. It's the little things that are just worth checking up on and making sure they work and we've got some night vision extend that out to eight minutes with a little bit of redstone and in about 20 seconds or so this barrel here will ah why is there magma cream in there this barrel here will have the full top layer filled with potions so an eight minute version of night vision wonderful again and again <laughs> i'm really happy with that <laughs> honestly i'm really happy with that now all we should do just place this here, maybe put that down one extra line and caps lock it, <laughs> if I can type properly. Oh, it, it said might vision. <laughs> uh, night vision. 
Wonderful. <laughs> and then, do I have hmm, a bone? I need a bone. More to the point, I want white dye. That is something that I will uh, really enjoy about getting into the next update is the glow squid or the glow ink. It means that rather than having to do that, I can actually really spice up my, my signs and whatnot around the place. And especially here, it'll make it a lot more visible, a lot easier to see. Even though most of the time I come around here and hit these correctly with just muscle memory, <laughs> it'll still be nice to have a couple of them sorted out and, and definitely displaying what, what we want from it. Now, why was I here? Ah, white dye. <laughs> I will just grab a decent handful of that and make myself one more of those item frames. And I should quickly check if I actually have a Fortune 3 villager. Oh, hello. Where did you spawn? Over in my beautiful little garden? I hope not. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Ah, well, not too big a deal. Mending, protection, unbreaking, silk touch, affinity. Come on, one of you, surely. Maybe I haven't. Just because I got lucky and got one to begin with. Looting three, of course. Riptide. Paling, which is good. Sharpness five. Yeah, I forgot about that. Hmm. Looks like none of them. Frostwalker two on him as well. So Riptide three. Channeling. And Frostwalker two. That's a great librarian. Looting. Curse of Energy is terrible. Okay. Well, we either have to roll for it on the enchanting table, which we do have enough levels for, or just try and get ourselves a villager, maybe actually when we put the villager over in there to uh, get our glass from, then we could try and roll through his trades until we get a fortune three. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So with a few little things to take care of, just some very basic stuff like this, getting the display set up so that we know what's in each barrel at a glance, like so. Cool. Making sure we have this over here. And since I haven't been doing a lot of mining recently, I'm just going to put my existing Fortune 3 in there. And then for this here, that's a lot worse. <laughs> it would probably be better if I went and turned these into dark oak signs instead. That way it's a little bit more contrasty. But I think I can handle all that off camera. I might make up a little supply of each type of potion. That way they're ready to go and we can grab whichever one we want whenever we need it. And in between episodes, I'll see whether I can get some villagers in here and train them up as well to complete this area. And then it's ready to go at a moment's notice whenever we need it. And we can tick that off as another finished project. Very cool. Well, with that, I think it's about time I... Uh, got back to business and continued on my journey to uh, make these islands of the Isle of Ender, which is very quickly turning into the Archipelago of Ender, and see whether I can get some more work done before I get started on my next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one. <laughs> Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you uh, like the little design I came up with for the double blaze spawner and also i'd really like to know what you guys think about the upcoming 1.17 update whether you want me to jump in in some way or form before i get it updated on this world that way we can check out a couple of things or if you're happy to just wait a little bit as the mods that i use update so i can continue to make my videos in the same way i do now in the next episode i think we're going to go over to the island behind me i would like to grab a few animals from around the world i have some cows already but i'd like to get myself some chickens some pigs some sheep, some cows, and maybe some horses, and bring them over into this area, creating or starting to create our little farmstead. <laughs> so I hope you're looking forward to that next episode. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for the continued support. I really appreciate you guys, especially Tom, my level three supporter. It's truly incredible what you do for me. And as always, I hope you take care of yourselves until the next episode, and I'll see you then. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Take care. Whoop. <laughs>